Hi there people, Mark Ferrier here, chilling out in my, uh, in my study, and I've replaced my Amiga for uh, another system. Let's go check okay. it out. It is time to fool around with the uh, Turbo Chameleon again. I have this um, Turbo Chameleon 64 cartridge, which is hooked up over a VGA to this Samsung TV. Um, there's a creative um, travel sound speaker connected over a jack plug on the side and two uh, competition pro reproduction joysticks are actually connected. Um, and over a PS2 connection, there's this Dell motherboard. So let's turn on the power. Now, basically this system will uh, in a bit boot up uh, in uh, a mode that is also the same if you put it if you put it in uh, in uh, a Commodore 64, you basically uh, get to, uh, for example, uh, mount a card. Just put it in slot one, and it'll actually uh, run a card. Now. You can uh, also mount drives, like, for example, uh, it just you just browse uh, to it and it just uh, loads it in. Now the the borders are a bit offset. That's a bit weird, but yeah, that's just uh, how it is. And here you can actually see that the 1541, because this is actually a turbo load system, and it actually recognized the. Uh, the 1541 because it emulates the C64 and also the, the 1541 disk drive. Now this is much more than just a Commodore 64 FPGA. It actually comes with a couple of cores that I managed to uh, uh, to configure. This is a very ad hoc uh, solution. Now. Um, I'm actually running an old version of the of the software because that it's actually up to a beta um, G, I believe, and this is a beta nine C. Um, the thing is, uh, uh, don't change it if it's working. I say, and uh, I have yet to find a reason to actually use a newer firmware, but. Uh, what it actually is capable of doing is actually running Amiga software as well. It does the mini MIG. And it really functions as a mini MIG. It emulates an Amiga uh, 500. If you press F uh, F12, it brings up the menu. And I've got a couple of uh, files on here. Uh, Alien Syndrome, for example. And it'll just boot from it, hopefully. <laughs> this is a game I've yet to try, but... Uh, of course, of course it's a game that might not work. Or it may, it may actually work. So a lot of uh, ADF files just run from it. And it's actually like running it from, uh, from, from a real Amiga. And you can hook up uh, a PS2 mouse. I haven't done so yet, but you can hook up a PS2 mouse and have it uh, configured as, um, and it just does everything. So I have to cut power to it because it, it's, there's no way to exit the core if you press one of the buttons. It'll just uh, it'll just uh, power cycle and just come back as an Amiga. What else uh, is possible? Um, it's possible to use it as an uh, MSX, <laughs> and this is normal. If you run it for the first time, it fails to load the BIOS from the SD card. But if you press uh, the left button, the right button, I mean, it loads in the BIOS, and it actually uh, boots into an MSX. Uh, turbo or an MSX Plus machine, MSX Plus machine with eight eight gigabytes, eight gigabytes, eight megabytes of RAM, 
And on my real system, I actually end up using this shell quite a bit. If you press Q, you uh, get uh, transformed into, uh, transported into MSX DOS, which is actually residing on this card. It's really weird because this card has MSX files on it, Commodore 64 files. It's, it really is a hybrid. You can actually use the MSX DOS to do file operation on the Commodore 64 files and stuff. It's It really is a very kind of mind-fucking thing. So, ROM load, spman b.rom slash r to run it. It may actually be possible to use that uh, fancy new stuff that uh, um, uh, that automatic ROM loading uh, thing that uh, Patrick was actually using a while ago. But uh, yeah, Spaceman Bo. And of course it's running. <laughs> no. let's, let's power cycle it again. So yeah, it's a very capable machine. Um, what else is on here? Um, PC Engine. And basically suffers from the same error. PC Engine, PCE. Uh, Afterburner 2. And there you have it. Oh, and of course I try a game that has significant errors. Um, let's power cycle it because there's, you know, it's not complete. Uh, so load the core. I think Blazing Lasers, Bla Blazing Lasers does work. Uh, go to PCE and then Blazing blazing lasers. I think that does work. Yep. Isn't that something? It's a bit of a wired mess. Yeah. So, been enjoying a quiet evening in the study with the Turbo Chameleon 64. Yeah. And a core that I totally forgot to show you guys is actually it also doubles as a VIC-20. So let's uh, make it boot up and let's uh, launch the uh, VIC-20 core. Uh, what, what is it? Uh, VIC-20. Chame Chameleon VIC-20. So it boots up as a VIC-20 and it starts to load the mega card ROM. I've got one of these uh, VIC-20 mega cards and um, um, I was actually able to dump that and uh, it actually is a card containing uh, the entire library or a lot of the library of the VIC-20, a lot of um, cartridge games, um, but it also does um, uh, disk and memory expansion and stuff. So. Uh, Excellent stuff. Of course, this is a point uh, nine release uh, dating back from 2014, but it actually manages to boot the mega card uh, once it's uh, loaded in. It's 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 actually quite a huge card, so it must be loaded into memory. But there it is, just like uh, it would uh, appear on a VIC 20. So you're actually able to navigate the. Uh, the menu with one of the joysticks. So let's check out one of the cartridge games. Uh, for example, uh, Centipedo Defender. Start. And then we have Defender. Bloody hell. <laughs> if you press reset, it actually resets back to the cartridge menu. So basically, this actually functions as a uh, 
Let me see, what do we have? Centipede. F1. And there we have Centipede. <laughs> cool stuff, isn't it? 